Hello, welcome to another episode of the Futurum Tech Webcast. I'm Dave Raffo, your host for this one, and I'm here with Greg White of Nutanix and Pratish Nalangi of AMD. So uh, let's start out by just talking a little bit about your roles, what, what, what you do for your uh, respective companies. Give us a quick, down, a quick rundown on your specific job roles. So, uh, Greg, let's start with you. Yeah, thanks so much. Excited to be here. Uh, I am at Nutanix covering our solutions marketing. So we work across the various capabilities of our platform to bring to market solutions for things like end user computing, robo, business critical apps and databases, really you name it. We're, we're working to, to put together those solutions that uh, customers are looking for. Uh, okay, Pratish. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for having me here. My name is Pratish. I'm the product marketing manager here at AMD, part of the server business unit, and uh, I manage uh, work mostly on the uh, virtualization infrastructure. Okay. So, Pratish, you work with um, several different um, AMD software partners? Is, is that yes. Right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, yes, I work with uh, most of our ISV partners and, and mainly with Nutanix here. Okay, great. So, uh, so Greg, uh, you know, Nutanix made uh, hyperconverged infrastructure, you know, what we now call HCI, you know, popular. It's probably, a, what, about a dozen years ago. Um, you know, the IT landscape was different than public and hybrid and multi-cloud use of, you know, they weren't nearly as prevalent. They've grown considerably. So, uh, you know, and now we, Nutanix positions itself as a hybrid and multi-cloud company. So, uh, you know, how has the the rise of the hybrid and multi-cloud impacted HCI use cases? And, you know, how has Nutanix adapted to that? Yeah, thanks so much. We're excited. You know, it's been an interesting journey, you know, really starting out trying to make infrastructure invisible and, and take a lot of the, the pain, the manual pieces out uh, and automate that. And and we were able to do that successfully with, you know, kind of some initial key workloads like VDI was a big one. And um, and what we've seen, you know, as, as organizations have matured, they've started to bring the public cloud into what they're doing. They're looking for a way to bridge that so they don't get back into that, you know, silos of, of um, infrastructure. And so what we've been able to do is use HCI, deploy that on a public cloud, deploy it on a, a a service provider is just the same way they do on-prem and really bring all that together. And so it opens up to, to really get to your question around the use cases. We're seeing some of the initial ones being, you know, the ability to burst a cloud, like say you've got some VDI users for a particular time of year, being able to do DR to the cloud is a big one and being able to really move workloads around. So being able to take advantage of the things that you can do in a public cloud and then uh, move it back on prem if you want to, and and that having to do all that without refactoring, and so that's some of the the hybrid use cases we're seeing. But we continue to see more and more workloads beyond VDI, like databases and apps, moving moving to HCI as well. So you know, we talk a lot, we hear a lot about modern apps these days with containers and cloud native and things like that. But you know, from from you know your standpoint, what do we mean exactly when we say modern apps? What, what apps are we talking about? Yeah, you know, there there are two big spectrums we we look at. Clearly, what you're talking about the containers, Kubernetes, what the way people are designing apps in, in, in a new way so that they're much easier to be portable, the things that, that we've talked about a little bit before. We're also seeing more, you know, when you say modern apps, kind of modern approaches for current apps. So we're seeing a lot more databases and, and performance applications moving uh, to a cloud platform. Uh, we just did a customer survey where uh, over the last couple of years, we've done a customer survey and <clears throat> a couple of years ago, it was about 69% of our customers were using databases on our platform, and now it's it's over 90%. And so those performance workloads are moving as a modernization of, of them occur, and then also the containers piece. And, and that's an exciting place where I think a lot of this is going uh, with, with the new kinds of apps that are being developed, AI and, and others. Um, the container piece is becoming more and more important. So how, how has Nutanix changed the cloud, its cloud platform to 
to meet the needs of these new apps? Yeah, it's, so uh, a big area is really looking at like what we did for virtualization and, and simplifying and automating a lot of the, the processes in the back end, doing that for the data services for containers. Uh, so we're able to provide protection, automate a lot of that, make it easier for the developers to really create and know that they've got like an enterprise grade app while uh, they're not being slowed down by having to do everything manually or wait on a lot of uh, work to be done in the background by other teams, uh, being able to bring different types of storage onto the platform. You know, in the past, we've had to have silos for our objects, for our files, for our blocks. Uh, being able to have all those different types of data on our same platform really makes um, that app development and those more modern apps a lot more powerful because now they can take advantage of file storage and object storage, you know, as, as a part of, of them building that app. Um, and then really optimizing the platform so that we can adapt to different types of apps. So we can now do storage heavy nodes, compute only nodes. So if an application like a database that um, has licensing, you know, challenges around, uh, you know, sockets, then you could have a uh, more of a compute heavy node and then have a storage node uh, available there. And so there are ways to optimize uh, our platform for different applications now too. Okay, great. So, you know, we know Nutanix and, and HCI is software defined uh, infrastructure and storage, but obviously you still need the underlying hardware. So, uh, you know, Nutanix partners with all the major server vendors, um, you know, close partnership with HPE, which is now out with its uh, ProLion DX uh, Gen 11 servers. And they use, uh, like other servers on the market now, they use the, the latest uh, AMD chip technology, the the EPIC 9004, commonly known as uh, Genoa, the code name anyway. So, um, you know, Pritish, maybe you could tell us a little bit about these chips and, you know, what new capabilities do they bring that helps hybrid and, and cloud native workloads? Yes, definitely. So, I mean, here at AMD, like, yeah, we started into data center business about three, four years ago with Rome, our first generation of uh, uh, Epic CPU for enterprise solutions. And since then, we have consistently delivered to our customers uh, year by year. Uh, and then, and has off to our leadership and, and engineering team for that consistent execution. Uh, but whereas when we come to uh, general IT or hyperconverged infrastructure and virtualization, right? Like uh, what we have seen from our customer is uh, the performance and uh, total cost of ownership really matters to them. I mean, if you look at, at the, if you take one step back and, and look at the industry uh, right now, every uh, CIO is thinking, okay, fine, how do I, uh, keep my infrastructure updated so that not only it addresses to current uh, applications, apps, modern apps, uh, but also it is it handles the applications of the same workload from two years from now or three years from now, right? Like that's every IT engineer's. Uh, uh, the question is like, okay, fine. Will my infrastructure handles uh, that uh, perform or uh, applications coming out like one year or two years from now? Uh, I think that's where uh, AMD stands out with our uh, fourth generation of Epic CPU, uh, which was launched uh, late last year. Uh, with we have leadership performance, uh, security. If you look at per core based performance or per watt based performance, we have uh, great results there. But also, uh, what we offer to our customer is that you not only get all these great performance and and. Uh, 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 TCO, but also you'll get the most secure, right? Like uh, with with underlying uh, feature that is your CPU and your infrastructure is secured with our uh, top of the notch Infinity Guard uh, security features. Yeah, I mean we you know we can't have a data center or cloud conversation today without addressing security. So um, you know you mentioned a few features. Anything else in those chips that that help with security? You, you know how 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 big of a of a role is the security? exactly? I mean, I, I want to quote this uh, a revised uh, quote from Spider Man movie, right? Like with great infrastructures comes great security responsibilities or security threats. Uh, with that being said, like, yes, uh, here at AMD, with, with every Epic CPU, you get uh, Infinity Guard, which is our uh, enterprise security solutions. Uh, and then one of the main features I want to highlight here is uh, 
uh, SED or secure encrypted virtualization. What this means is that this is a hardware-based security uh, provided by the CPU or, or silicon, uh, whereas wherein here, I think the CPU uh, uh, assigns an individual unique code for each of the virtual machines running on that infrastructure, which is invisible to the hypervisor running it, uh, it's on or even the, uh, the IT admin itself. So that allows uh, your bad uh, agent or rogue agent in, in your infrastructure. So whenever, it, and then it's impossible uh, to, to get into those VMs. So, and then this is available across all the SKUs. Uh, all have, they have to do is just turn on this feature uh, when, when they're setting up their infrastructure. I guess you, you can't get more secure than Spider-Man, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are, we are the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. So. <laughs> so, so another topic that, that seems to have become mandatory in any IT discussion is <laughs> AI and machine learning, right? So. Uh, so where does where does AI ML fit in with the latest uh, Nutanix and and AMD products and you know where do you see that technology going? Uh, we'll, we'll start with Greg on this one. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, and it's a really fun topic. AI ML has been around for a while, as far as we're concerned. It's been a key part of our product. You know, we use it to help do forecasting and make sure we've got uh, our best performance and the way the the platform runs. But we've also had a bunch of customers that have been uh, using it for things more like, you know, your traditional video inferencing, whether that's checkout or uh, we have a construction company that uses it to see where uh, where workers are wearing their safety gear or not and if they're in the wrong place. So, you know, it's kind of those traditional models. We've, we've been around, but, you know, obviously the big exciting new thing is is the ge generative piece. Yeah. And, and we're starting to really see that um, pick up with things where uh, where organizations are looking to keep a hold of their data and, you know, like they want to query a database of, of regulations to before they can, you know, make a decision on a loan or use it for chatbot for support um, within a particular region or state. And so the kind of the new things are, are those new models, but, you know, kind of still a, a workload. Uh, and then the other piece is really seeing this in different places. So like out at the edge, training models, some, you know, maybe taking a model that's been built in the cloud, training it on your data on-prem and then deploying it um, at a branch office like I was talking about. So lots of exciting ways that people are, are looking at this now and in different locations. And so really being able to have the ability to move your workload around, have the data with it, still have that kind of enterprise grade approach wherever it's going to be, uh, is all something that that we're seeing and, and seeing how you know a hyper converged a cloud platform really can can help with as as this you know new technology matures and as people really figure out how they're going to use it. Yeah, as you say, it's been around a while, but I, I imagine that you didn't have a whole lot of. Uh... You know, customers specifically asking for it probably right until like the last year or so. Yeah, on the generative piece for sure. Yeah, it's, generative it's, it's stuff. exploded. Yeah, yeah. And what about on the hardware side? Uh, you know, where does it fit with with uh, servers and chips, Pratish? Uh, uh, how, how does that impact AMD? Yes. So yeah, as you mentioned earlier, yeah, no conversation is complete without. AI and, and machine learning, right? And, and it's a great time to be in here uh, to see this uh, huge uh, development in a, in a very short period of time. So here at AMD, uh, we have a broad portfolio of training and inference computing engines uh, and, and a deep ecosystem of AI partners and co-innovations. I just want to uh, highlight a couple of months ago, we had an AI day at, at AMD and, and we had uh, our partners on stage talking about the, the results and uh, the performance they are seeing uh, with the AMD. Uh, like hugging face and and also i just want to highlight as when when we talk about the ai inferencing and, and different models right like yes uh uh it, it's it's great to run on gpu or, or you need that extra power uh but we have also seen some of our partners like neural magic or third eye uh, who have run these models or ai inferences on the epic cpu itself and then they have seen great results uh so uh <clears throat> with that said uh uh, if if whoever is watching this, if you guys have a wait time of twelve months or over that for your GPUs, uh, try it on AMD Epic CPU. 
you, you, you'll get the same and, and great results at the, the fraction of the cost. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a good point because you know a lot of a lot of uh, technology products, um, you know, when they talk about AI, they say, well, "What does that mean?" Well, we support GPU, but yeah, obviously there's there's other ways of doing it, and there's a lot more a lot more to uh, gener- generative AI than just uh, supporting GPUs. So, and, uh, just if I can add, right, like, but uh, especially in the AI and machine learning field, uh, so we have the CD NA3, uh, which is the next generation AI accelerator ac- architecture. Uh, it's, it, it's a dedicated accelerator engine for AI and, and any uh, other uh, workloads which requires high compute. Uh, and, and with uh, our 3D packaging uh, or 3D vCache at, or with the fourth generation AMD Epic CPU, right? Like you get the best optimized performance and, and uh, power efficiency. So. So, Greg, you know, Nutanix is a software-defined architecture, software-defined storage. You guys make a, you know, make that 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 plain that you're not a hardware vendor, you're a software vendor. But, you know, and even though, you know, the hardware is not yours, but how much difference does the underlying hardware make when you're running the Nutanix cloud platform? Yeah, it's really, really important. We And if you start, you know, one of the things we talk about is um, really being able to have that flexibility and, and choice to deploy the way you need to. And so different form factors are, are important when it comes to types of clusters scaling, like I talked about storage or compute heavy or in a in an edge site versus in a data center. So, you know, having an option, a variety of form factors is huge, uh, you know, from the processor level, really being able to take advantage of those new developments that come, being able to use um, both the, the performance, but also the efficiency, the density. And, and we're really focused on power consumption. And, and we've shown HCI bringing a lot of value to organizations really trying to reduce, you know, their, their power and cooling and all that. And, you know, as a result, carbon is a part of that. And so there are places that feeds into the hardware piece. And then the security thing, you know, security piece that Pratesh talked about is important. And so... We really want to be able to take advantage of all of that, but then you know the hardware piece, like an HPE, like an AMD, they bring key key elements that really support what we do on the software side, and and they bring some good management and, and pieces along with that too that we can tie into, and and so it really creates that full solution to the software with the optimal platform to run on it. Okay, great. So. Uh... Thanks a lot, guys. It's been very, very enlightening. And uh, you've been watching another episode of Futurum Tech Webcast. So if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next episode. So thank you very much for watching.